In this video, we're talking about accrual accounting. So we're talking about accrual accounting. And what I want to do is I want to get you to realize the beauty of this concept. Accrual accounting is one of those concepts you have to really understand if you're going to work in accounting or corporate finance. Let's start with the definition. Accrual accounting reports financial statements based on economic events rather than when cash transactions occur. What this means is that when you issue financial statements, you want those statements to reflect the economic activity that happens, or so what's actually happening in the business, as opposed to just whether cash is going in or out of your bank account. This definition is so important to understand just because there's so many financial statements out there that use accrual accounting. For instance, if you're looking at a company's annual report and this company trades stock uh, that's publicly traded, those financial reports are required to use accrual accounting. And so there's a lot of financial statements out there that use accrual accounting. The alternative to this is to use uh, financial statements on a cash basis of accounting. And a lot of small businesses out there use cash basis accounting, and that's because it's so much easier. But it's important for you to understand why larger businesses use accrual accounting and the benefits. So I want to talk through an example that kind of shows the difference between cash basis and accrual accounting. So I want you to imagine that you own a consulting company and you have a team of consultants underneath you that work for you in this consulting business. And imagine that you just landed a new business deal. So you did this deal with this company that's located in Las Vegas, and they've agreed to pay you $1.2 million to do this large year-long contract. And in this contract, um, they've set uh, monthly payments that they've agreed to pay you, $100,000 a month, to do this work over the course of a year. Now, consultants normally um, get compensated on an hourly basis, hour, hourly rates. But because this is such a large project, it's a year-long project, you've set these performance milestones every month, and you're going to get paid every month. All right, so you have this great new deal. And so you take, you bring your team of consultants together and you send them off to Las Vegas to start work. And we all know a little something about Vegas. <laughs> There's a lot of fun things to do. There's lots of flashing lights. And this team of consultants just happens to have never been to Las Vegas before. So they get to Las Vegas and they are excited and they get a little bit distracted, and they spend a lot of time goofing off in the casinos. All right, so meanwhile, you're in a different city, and you're busy running this big consulting firm. And from your perspective, what you see is this cash that's dropping into your bank account every month. Every month, you're getting $100,000. $100, and so from your perspective, everything is great. <laughs> and you get distracted running this big uh, consulting company. Three months goes by. <laughs> so after three months, you think to yourself, okay, I have $300,000. You know, it might be a good idea for me to check in on my team in Las Vegas and see how they're doing. So you get on a plane and you fly to Las Vegas and you get there to find that your team of consultants has done nothing. No work has been completed. <laughs> now, in this example, obviously, there's organizational problems going on here. But I want to set those aside for, the, for a minute because what I want to focus on is the accounting issue. This example really shows why accrual accounting is important. Because here you have $300,000 sitting in your bank account, but no work has been done. Now, if this three months worth of work never gets done, you're going to have to give this $300,000 back to the customer. 
So it's not really appropriate to record this $300,000 as revenue on your financial statements. The point here is that what's going on in your bank account may not necessarily reflect the activity that's really going on in your business. And that's what accrual accounting is trying to capture. Let's do a comparison here. If you looked at what would happen under cash basis accounting, so based on the cash transactions, you would record an increase to cash of 300,000 and an increase to revenue of 300,000. Now let's contrast that with accrual accounting because in accrual accounting, you would record the increase to cash of 300,000 and, uh, and unearned revenue of 300,000. So you can see here that accrual accounting more accurately reflects what's going on in the business. Here you have $300,000 worth of work that has not been completed. Now we're touching on a little bit of revenue recognition here and revenue recognition is a really deep subject area in accounting. I could talk about it for days, it's fascinating, but I really wanna to stick to my point on accrual accounting. So in this situation, you can't recognize the revenue until it's actually been earned. And that is what accrual accounting is communicating. The key point that I wanna make here is that accrual accounting incorporates non-financial information into financial statements. This concept explains why accrual accounting is so difficult. So if I were to just take my bank statements and turn them into financial statements, that would be easy. Uh, your bank statements is exact dollar amounts, cash in, cash out, boom, I could just make a financial statement of that. But that wouldn't effectively communicate what's actually happening in the business. To do that, you have to take your financial statements and make the adjustments necessary to reflect the actual activity and reflect whether the work is actually being done. And that information is not on any bank statement anywhere. You have to actually go out and talk to people and find out if the work is being done. And that is what is so difficult. So let's talk about how you get this non-financial information. You need to get, be able to get status updates for your projects. And in order to do that, we use something called project management. And project management gives you um, a methodology with some level of rigor to be able to report on the percentage of completion of projects. And you can use that information to base on uh, how much revenue you're recognizing. Now this gets into project management, which is a really deep subject area. And in project management, they focus on three main things. Reporting on budget, reporting on scope, and reporting on schedule. And so you'll notice that financial information is only one of these three things. So two thirds of the information being reported to you is this non-financial information on whether, whether the work is actually getting done. So I'm gonna talk more about project management in future videos, but the point I wanna make here is you're gonna take information from your project managers and use that information to make decisions on what to report on your accrual financial statements. Now I wanna give you a practical step-by-step -step of what accountants do to generate accrual financial statements. So the first thing is that every month you close the books. Closing the books means that every month you do a set of reporting that captures what's happened in that month and you make accrual adjustments for that period. The second step is you get status updates from your project manager so you can understand what's actually happened that month. The third step is you perform something called accruals. Now accruals are adjusting entries that adjust revenue and expenses to reflect the actual economic activity of your business for that period. And then the final step is publishing your financial reports. So you can see how this is a lot of work, but what this accomplishes is it effectively communicates the activity that has happened in your business during that period. Now I wanna end by talking about why. Why do we do accrual accounting? 
Why are we doing all of this work? And you might be asking the question, isn't the cash basis important to understand? I mean, cash is the reason why we run businesses, to generate cash flow. So isn't cash so much more important to know what's going on? And to be honest, <laughs> I've made another YouTube video on the statement of cash flows. And that is one of the primary reasons the statement of cash flows exist, is to understand what's going on with the cash. And so it's really important to understand cash. But at the same time, accrual accounting is telling us something more. So the real reason why we do accrual accounting is because of capital markets. Cash is only one component of the overall equity portfolio that is funding your company. So you're going to have cash, you'll have debt, you'll have receivables, you'll have stock ownership, you'll have all of these sources that are funding your company. What capital markets really care about is productivity. So capital markets want to know how much revenue you're generating every period, how profitable are you every period, and they're using that information to understand your profitability. Because capital markets need to be able to look across the landscape and look at different companies and understand who is generating the most profitability. That's why accrual accounting is so amazing. I mean, just think about it. Accrual accounting is this long set of rules that accountants follow to generate this set of financial statements. And these financial statements are standardized around the world. Accountants everywhere understand what accrual accounting is and how to communicate under accrual accounting. So accrual accounting is this piece of technology that we as humans have developed to enable capital markets to work. This is the method that businesses communicate levels of productivity to each other. And that is why accrual accounting is so important. If you think accrual accounting is important, leave a comment down below and say, yay for accrual accounting. <laughs> That'll really make my day. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button. The best way to supercharge a business is through accounting and corporate finance, and I release a new video every week. So come back and check out next week's video.